Easter and More is an all-encompassing beachside retreat program that lasts for four magical days of every April and which takes place within a quaint cultural republic by the sea along the Lekki Peninsula strip of Lagos State known as the La Campagne Tropicana Beach Resort. The Easter package for children is a bumper harvest of good, clean fun. Spiced with lots of laughter and featuring such delights as compelling fireside stories on the beach sands, singing and dancing competitions, outdoor beach games, swimming, horse riding and jungle adventures that take the kids on exciting nature treks into the innermost bowels of the forest where nature-friendly structures, including a library and reading room, can be discovered, propped up between the trees. For adults, the Easter and More four-day package of leisure is filled to the brim with simple, uncomplicated pleasures, many of them long discarded and lost to childhood but which still give the spontaneous joys of youth. The sense of harmony and well-being that the La Campagne Tropicana Resort bequeaths its guests stems from its friendly regard for nature. And this is perceived more strongly around the ocean front, where the beach ecosystem thrives undisturbed by the presence of eco-friendly structures on the sands. It's just amazing to look at the stage and see trees growing through it. That's breathtaking. And it's something you would never see in the States. So the fact that they incorporate nature and they're not destroying the life that was here originally speaks volumes to the value that we put on life in general. This tight embrace between nature and man-made things is rewarded with the creation of a spectacular viewing experience on nights such as Easter and more, when tree trunks turned molten gold encircle the performers with a strange brilliance, forming stunning backdrops on the King Sonia Day stage. Like an oasis in a desert of darkness, the stage hangs suspended between the trees, cocooned by nothingness and bathed in sheets of light. lovers and lovers of culture congregate on mats and in groups on the darkened beach sands, their silhouettes stark against the burnished elements and saturated in the magnificent spectacle afforded by Easter and Moor. An infusion of talents from the West and the continent transforms the evening into a mirage of musical expressions, each style reflecting the language of the environment that surrounds it. With the wild edge of untamed renditions such as Atunda and Afeanukoko being placed side by side with the more sedate and refined performances of legendary favorites from the West, such as Club Nouveau and J. King. Thank you so much. One lay at the La Campine.
Tropicana Beach Resort for inviting us to this beautiful country yeah, yeah. and to this wonderful city. I appreciate it, we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. We're Club Nouveau, it's our first time in Africa. And the first time we come to Africa, we visit Nigeria. As the evening unfolds, the underlying message of Easter and more becomes clear. So you know that I don't play around. It is an attempt to repackage and refine present day music by recapturing the mastery of song delivery techniques and musical craft from the old school, which stole the hearts of the 70s, resulting into legendary hits such as Lean On Me, but which no longer exists in today's modern, digitalized world of music. For his stage charisma and endearing audience connection abilities, Iyaya, the Calabar born star, displayed an impressive range of vocal skills that night, with songs from his album that made box office hits, skyrocketing him to unimaginable peaks in his musical career. Twenty-one and already identified with the symbol of the Bata drums and her exquisite handling of them, Olo is well on her way to becoming a formidable custodian of a traditional art, which for generations has remained within the exclusive preserve of the men. <laughs> The fact that they are talking drums merely adds voice to the message they are being used to send across. And the message is simple. That you don't need to ape the western way of life and remain a cheap imitation of the real thing. But you can come out of the closet and command respect for your culture while changing it into a cosmopolitan presentation that can be embraced by the world. Given 
given its full musical accompaniment alongside the spectacular outlay of the stage. Anu's steamy debut number takes a new dimension this evening and blossoms into a full-fledged theatre presentation complete with pert mini-dance acts and innuendos all wrapped around the main show and synchronized to the finest detail. A variety of engaging side shows provide refreshing diversions during the major performances, including comedy drama and traditional dance routines from the southern part of Nigeria. The well-defined physiques of the models add to the allure of the ethnic-styled casuals on display. In dramatic contrast, a tasteful line of sensuous evening designs in earth-colored tones completes the stunning catwalk sequence. The musical foreplay that usually heralds the arrival of a notable person or the beginning of a great musical work preludes the entry of Afer Nikoku onto the stage, while unbridled Atunda dancers prepare the way ahead of her. The voluptuous outlay of the stage gives full girth to Affair's performance as it encompasses the magnificent range of musical enhancements and backups that make up a complete African orchestra. the traditional is personified in Afeni Koko, the new age African tigress that stalks the stage, taking over her rightful dominion with ease and wielding her talking pots with contemptuous confidence, unchallenged in her artistry of their musical tones. Round of applause. An ecstasy.
galaxy of explosions sear the heavens open, electrifying the fringes of the treetops. A befitting tribute to a night that will remain engraved on the minds of all those that were there, long after the final curtain is drawn. Breakfast the next day is an outdoor breezy affair which takes place on a strip of beach between a placid lagoon and the restless Atlantic waters. The talk making the rounds that morning was all about the night before, as guests recounted some of the unforgettable moments they were privileged to share. If you blend the wave, the music, the lighting together, it's speechless. It's something you cannot describe. And the breeze, I mean, it's, it's a, own, a new thing entirely. You cannot describe the feeling. The performances I've seen so far, they're loving. It's, it's just like it's a part of them. It's not anything phony or anything like that. It's like an expression, the way it was meant to be. It's like I can see their personality through their performance, you know what I mean? I'm listening to the drums and, 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 um, and the rhythm of Africa makes me have to make me make me want to go back and, and just re-listen to the music that I've recorded and add some of these influences into my American music because you know we're still Africans. We're still, you know, even though we live in America, we're, we're African Americans. You know, our, our, our ancestors, my great grandfather is from Madagascar. So I think if we all start tracing our roots back, we'll find that we are all uh, rooted here, and that's why the rhythm is so strong for us. And that's even though we've never, a lot of us have never been here, it still is inside of us. Afe, she is a dynamo. And I told her, girl, you got it. You keep going, you keep doing your thing, because you got it. The lighting, the artists, the sound, it was, it was magical. The fireworks added such a needed touch, a surprising touch. But last night was, it was magical. All of the artists just showed so well. They sounded so good. So it was a wonderful night last night and everyone here thoroughly enjoyed themselves. From a distance, a canoe load of Atunda entertainers filled with vibrant, welcoming songs and greetings for the breakfast guests. During reunions such as Easter and more, the Atlantic Ocean, old as time itself, and witness to the transatlantic slave movement of the 18th century, becomes a magnet and the natural point of contact for brethren in diaspora, as well as lovers of Africa, who converge upon the land of their first beginnings, to be given names that befit people of African descent, in obedience to the ancestral core. Being a custodian of the culture and traditional leader of a neighboring fishing community, the Bale of Ikegu is consulted with to preside over the rebirth process and convey the chosen names for each of the African-American brethren. Mr. Wanley Akimboboye, the founder of Motherland Beckons and a firm upholder of African traditions and customs, assumes the role of an interpreter, making public each of the chosen names and explaining their different meanings. I 
things? Well, it reminds me of, um, of my ancestors, the ones that I don't know. I don't know where they came from, what country they came from, but they came from this coast. They came from the Atlantic coast. And when I stand here, I think about those ancestors who were carried away from this continent. And to be back here, it's, it's, it's overwhelming to be back in the place where my ancestors came from. It's a very religious name that means we thank God. Olua Sheun. Titi Layo. Kola Wale. Ibuku. Ibuku means it's a gift to the world. <laughs> 